Hello and welcome to Deep Blue Sea, the podcast. I am Mark Hoffmeyer. And I am Jay Kluwer. And on this show, Mark and I have been through the entire Deep Blue Sea trilogy scene by scene. We're now looking at some Deep Blue Sea adjacent films. as films directed by Rennie Harlan, featuring sharks or aquatic action, or the occasional Deep Blue Scene. We're looking at a film that has a scene that's Deep Blue Sea adjacent. And that is the case today with Jurassic World. Uh, one of the biggest films of all time. You know what Jurassic World is. It's the fourth Jurassic Park film. And it features a, a Mosasaurus, a big underwater dinosaur that, you know, eats people. So we're going to talk about three scenes, focusing on one, but three scenes that feature the Mosasaurus in, in today. So we have the introduction of it, where it's shown at a big, big event, a big park show. Now we're going to have the uh, Pterodon attack, featuring the death of Zara. And then when it was up at the end, uh, to kind of round out its, its uh, comedy works in threes. Mosasaurus works in threes as well. So, Mark, what are your thoughts on Jurassic World? What's your history with Jurassic World? <sighs> okay, this is a tough one for me because I've never loved it, but I get that the ending features three dinosaurs murdering each other and then a mosasaurus eats <laughs> one of them. Yeah. I I know that there are helicopter explosions. I know that there are there's an Indominus Rex that's genetically modified. And it's, it's just a movie that Colin Trevorrow... I think he's fine, but just the amount of just there's just like a weird lack of coverage. It's very flat. You have the two kids who they're fine actors, but they're just sort of staring at things. You just get I don't know. It's an odd one for me. I mean, you get a dude riding a motorcycle next to Raptors and you get Vincent D'Onofrio going, oh, people are dying. I'm going to weaponize dinosaurs. Like it's it's an absurd, crazy little movie but it's never connected to me, but I still love it. And my favorite part though, is, is when Zara gets kaput. I mean, Zara, the assistant, I wrote a whole data article about this, Jay. Like there's a scene where Zara, she gets plucked out of the air and then she gets dropped and then she gets picked up by a pterodon. Then she gets dropped in. Then she gets picked up. Then she gets eaten. And I did the odds, Jay. Do you want to hear the odds? Have you ever heard me uh, talk about this? Uh, I think I've seen the post when it originally came out, uh, but I'd love to hear you talk about it again. Because this was, oh, this is 2018. I've been doing this for too long. All right, so, all right, it's open all year wrong, all year round, and they've never had an accident. So that's one. This is really rough math that John Levengood and I, one, one of uh, my MFF co-host and, and, and on the website, John's Horror Corner. So it's one in 3,650. And then we have, there's about 150 pterosaurs flying around and other flying beasts. So that, like, uh, escaped when the Indominus Rex and helicopter crashed into the aviary. Let's say that one in three of the flying beasts were big enough to pick up one of the guests and that each one picked up one person. So that's about 50 in 21,216. That's one in 424. Then we have, let's see, the majority of the guests have been pushed into the front area of the park. It's a very large area, and I'm guessing half of the people are close to the massive lagoon that housed the mosasaur, so it's one in two. So if a larger uh, pterosaur attacked you, the odds of it flying off with you alive or able to fight would be about one in two because... Those teeth, Jay, would just rip you into nothing. And then after being grabbed by the pterosaur, the odds of you fighting back would be one in two. So if you're picked up close to the water, you'd have a one in two chance of being dropped into the water. So then after all the math, I did a bunch of math. And I kind of thought, for, <laughs> for what happened to Zara, right, for what happened to her, I would say that she had about a one in 24,761,600 uh, percentage like that was like the odds of her that happening to her that day uh, yeah it's probably not covered on any life insurance <laughs> no. that actually <laughs> i actually think that it's it'd be less likely the odds of one and two of her being dropped into water i think she is the only person who gets dropped into yeah. the water yeah so i think it's it's even rarer than that so i i was up in the trillions and i was like this is a lot so then we both <laughs> worked it down like we worked it way down because if you think about the guests you don't like it's just this is the first major accident on that day. She's supposed to watch these kids who don't run. She's dropped and then picked up by another one and then dropped. Yeah. Like it's do you think Zara when she is chomped, do you think it's an immediate smush? Or do you think that she's sort of in the 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 tongue roof of the mouth smush phase? Like she I I don't think she is I, I think I think she swallowed whole. To make it worse. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to make it worse, but I think that's what happened because she she capably fits inside the mosasaur's mouth. Yeah. Like you get the 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 kind of the 
dying, screaming money shot isn't from Zara. It's of the the dinosaur that's picked her up. The uh, uh, which one is it? It's the the pterod ter- pteranodon. Pterodon, yeah. Uh, like that's the thing where the head and the wings are sticking out of the motorcycle's mouth. It's like flapping impotently, trying to do anything, and it's it's not, like well, that time Zara's done. She's gone. She's never seen in the film again. She's missing. She's in there. She's in uh, the stomach. So do you? So when that thing swallowed her, she was technically probably still beaten and bloodied and in shock and being swallowed so. whole. That's why I love the ending of the Lego Jurassic World game. A fun game that had a really annoying map mechanic that made it just difficult to start playing it. You couldn't just like hop on and go, okay, I want to go and do this level. You had to like drive over to where that is and work out where it is. I didn't go on with that. So I played through it once, never went back. Uh, but at the end of that, because it's Lego, it's for kids, they don't kill people in Lego. So at the end of that, uh, she is in the belly of the Mosasaur playing poker with a couple of uh, other Jurassic World workers and the Indominus Rex by the light of oh. a flare. So she she was swallowed whole, and the Indominus Rex was swallowed whole. <laughs> and they're just playing poker down there. That's amazing. And, <laughs> <laughs> and she, her death is quite the lightning rod. I mean, a lot yeah. of articles have covered this, and uh, Cracked wrote a really funny article about how six reasons Jurassic world brutally killed its biggest hero. And they said that she was the biggest hero. Cause okay. Like, well, you know, here, let, let me, let me work my way through this article. It's just not, ah, it's not scrolling. Come on, crack. All right. So here are the, here are the reasons. So the number one reason is our heroes are dicks. <laughs> yeah. All right. Two. Is that just the kids or is that Owen and Claire as well? I mean, everybody, right. Is it, it's, like Claire kind of ditches them. The... Yeah, yeah, Claire is. Yeah. Owen, Owen protects them at the end though. So Owen actually keeps them safe. Like he's looking out for them. And then, and then they put so divorce, huh? So it's like uh, they they're kind of making fun of the, um, like, I don't know. They just brought, and then they have this movie hates women. <laughs> from correct. And then let's see. The next reason is she's getting married, which I kind of love. Yeah, they make her have to be a bit of a, I think, a bridezilla was the word, bandied around. I've never been a big fan of that phrase. Yeah. But, like, you I, can be obsessed with your own wedding. That's allowed. Exactly. And then they said that she's career-driven. And they're like, so she's, oh, like, no, the real hero. Forbid. Yeah, exactly. So she's the real hero of this movie. But she's made out to be the bad guy, kind of, because she's the British assistant. British? She's Irish, I believe, but. Uh, Katie McGrath, yeah. Yeah, but they make her seem to be bad because she's the assistant who's forced to watch two brat kids who are currently know their parents are going through a divorce. But and then their aunt. It's probably not what she wanted to do that day, but she does it. Yeah. And like her aunt doesn't want to be with them. And like, what are you going to do, Jay? You know what I mean? Like, this is not assistant work. You're not a, you're not a, you know, you'll take the dog out for a walk, but you're not going to watch two kids all day. And then they escape yeah. her and then she gets eaten. She's with them, too, when the birds are around. Yeah, I, I feel like if things had gone better for him, uh, Irfan Khan as Simon Masrani might have been considered the hero of the film. Because he's like the, the big boss. He like tries to save everyone with a helicopter, but it just ends up destroying the aviary and letting all of the dinosaurs out to get everyone. And he tried. Um, so he would have been on that list of uh, heroes who died horribly. The world is just working against Zara, too, because like the kids escape. But then they get pushed out to another area, but then they come back to her. And then the her boss, boss's boss, lets all the pterosaurs out. Yeah. It's and then she goes to like, hey guys, we gotta get out of here. Then they stop. And she she turns around to see what they're doing. Like, hey guys, let's get out of the middle of the area here. And she's eaten. Yeah, she stands still. Is the, is the problem. But then after she's killed and like Claire comes back, Claire gets like uh, uh she gets up on top of a, a truck to look for the boys, and nothing comes down to get her. She's nothing. elevated and standing still. Oh, dude, like all the <laughs> heroes. There's a scene where the heroes are just shooting the pterosaurs with guns, and they're just facing one way. Yep. Not moving. It's not good. And then the kids run to watch her get eat by the mosasaurus. Nothing happens. They do. There's but, there's the, the screaming off screen. You like, it's like she she gets as you said she gets picked up by one, gets dropped, and one grabs her in midair because like a. Uh, uh, squabble in midair between them. Mm-hmm. And then when she gets, when she drops and plunges like three body lengths down into the water, she starts to swim up, and one swoops down, swims. I didn't think these things would swim, but like grabs her, lifts her up, 
drops her, lifts her up, drops her in the in the water, and then we cut away to the kids, and it's like she, she is still screaming, so lifts up and drops her several more times off screen. This is just terrific for her to be going through. Oh gosh, yeah, and all because go. she's a s- assistant who's getting married, but she also lives on an island working, so she's not there for the wedding. Yeah, she's got to do everything remotely. Exactly. Just, yeah, I, I would say, hey, babysitting a couple of kids at the theme park you work at, you can probably make a few phone calls during that time. That seems like an, an opportunity to do that. Um, yeah, because they're they're. I mean, listen, they're old enough to go on the park there themselves, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think they. they I think. Uh, Judy Greer just asked, uh, sister to do it. I'm like a tour, like a, a personal guide, like get you to the front of the lines kind of thing, get you into places, like make it a special trip, like cue cutter. Mm. But they never really said that, did they? They just kind of no. were like, here, follow them, follow them yeah. around. Yeah. Those kids are old. My parents would have given me like a stick and a ha- like a handkerchief full of things and just sent me on my way <laughs> to explore the park. Like, we'll see you in a few days. Don't let the T-Rex eat you. Like, that's what they would do. And then poor Zara gets eaten. And also, do they feed great white sharks to the Mosasaurus? They uh, feed it at least one. Yeah, so there's the big sort of SeaWorld-esque show where, yeah, they've got a, a great white shark hanging up. In fact, this is a nice nod to Jurassic Park. So, so let me get to it. I, I quite like this film. The Jurassic Park franchise is my franchise. Oh, I didn't ask you, my bad. It's fine. But, uh, like Jurassic Park is my favorite film of all time. I really love The Lost World. Jurassic Park 3. Has its flaws. It's a great aviary scene. I'm not a huge fan. But Jurassic World, when I went to see this, uh, I loved it. The first time around. Especially the scene where the kids find the site of the old film. Mm -hmm. And they make the torch out of the T-Rex fossil leg bone. And the When Dinosaurs Rule the World banner. And they find the truck. I just love, I have the huge, biggest grin on my face. <laughs> yes, this is what I wanted. It is fan service of the highest order, and I am a fan. This is the I want to see. I, I agree that it is flawed. Uh, this is uh, the first of three deep scenes we're going to do, uh, looking at the, the latter trilogy of these, because there's aquatic scenes in Fallen Kingdom and Dominion as well. I think this is probably my favourite of the three, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about them as we get to them. But I, I just had a, a great time with this. But yeah, it, it is... Colin Trevor is not the greatest director in the world. Uh, the characters are a little flat. It's... Yeah, we have a guy on a motorbike next to some raptors, but the guy is Chris Pratt, who is kind of a a Route 1 pick. He's no 1993 Jeff Goldblum. He's like... Sam Neill, in 93, was known for, like, horror films. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's... he's Always oh, like an intense, weird guy. He's not like a well-known leading man. So having him as your lead in this big family action horror was like an off-kilter choice. Chris Pratt, it's, he's in all of these films. That's what he does. It's kind of and they make one point five billion, which is nuts. Yeah, yeah, which and then people learn from that like, oh, yeah. Chris Pratt in your film. It's like, no, no, put dinosaurs in your film. Yeah. That's what that's what makes it. people are here. The, the the Spielberg's ethos for the first one with casting these. Uh, non-A-list actors was people aren't coming to this film to see Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum. They're coming here to see dinosaurs. So it doesn't matter the who we cast. five aspect ratio. Right. It doesn't matter who we cast, they're coming to see the dinosaurs. So this was a this is an opportunity to cast character actors, to cast lesser actors who will then be propelled into stardom by being in what is it, the fifth biggest film of all time or something? But no, they cast Chris Pratt. <laughs> Jay, the safety not guaranteed cast. So you have Jake Johnson, but you have yeah. Aubrey Plaza instead of yeah. Bryce Dallas Howard. And then yeah. you have Mark Duplass That's the guy. Yeah. as Chris Pine. Pratt. Were you, oh yeah, Chris Pratt. No, keep Chris Pine. Put Chris Pine in, Pine in this movie. But yeah, put no, them in. Do the safety not guaranteed cast yeah. in this movie. So do we keep Jake Johnson in his role but beef it up a bit? Or do we make... Jake Johnson, the Vincent D'Onofrio character, or Mark Duplass, the, the Vincent D'Onofrio character. Yes, make <laughs> Duplass the Vincent D'Onofrio character, and then make Jake Johnson the Chris Pratt the Chris character. Pratt, yeah. And then there's another actor, oh, uh, Karan Sony, make him the Jake Johnson BD, character. Yeah, or, or B.D. Wong. Not, oh, sorry, yeah! No, or Irfan Khan, because B.D. Wong, let's keep his B.D. Wong, because he's coming back from the last one. But make him Irfan Khan's character, perhaps. Wait, and Kristen Bell's in it? 
and so is like Marilyn Ra- uh, Rashjob, like Rice Cup. Uh, Rice Cup. Uh, well, I mean, one of them could be the Lauren Lapkiss character. I like Lauren Lapkiss in this. Film, yeah, so keep her in there. She's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you could have one, one of them, like Omar Omar C's character. No, keep him in it. Yeah, true. He's great. Luther. <laughs> um, but I think we did it. Duplass yeah. is D'Onofrio. Uh, Jake yeah. Johnson is as Owen Brady, Grady. Brady. And then uh, Karan Sony as Jake Johnson's character in the control room. Jake Johnson's character, Lowry Crothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. We got a new <laughs> the safety not guarantee crew. Yeah, I, I like that too. Have 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 him play some music. Get Jake Johnson all beefed up. No, you don't need it. He's just him and Plaza yelling at each other. Hey, yeah. hey, you Raptor. Hey, you Raptor. Calm down, Jake. Jo- I'm Jake Johnson, Raptor. <laughs> the whole script is improvised. Yeah. What are you what are you doing? Like you look like you're like on on like the third street on the fourth. Like wait, wait, what? Like just him mumbling about stuff. But yeah, back to your earlier point. They do feed it a great white shark, so we get another nod to. Uh, this is a nod to both Jurassic Park in terms of. T-Rex doesn't want to be fed. He wants to hunt. And feeding it a go, and also Spielberg's jaws. But they're vulnerable species. Right. And well, mate, th- okay. I, I'm sure we've had this conversation before, I think, because that's what came up numerous times on Deeper Sea, because it's a remake of Deeper Sea. Uh, where <laughs> they... I think our theory was, maybe they cloned and bred great white sharks to feed to the Mosasaur. But then the amount of food... The amount of effort that would go into that is millions of silly. dollars. But then it is, it's a dead great white shark. So could they somehow create a kind of a fake great white shark? That sounds even more expensive. It does. But like I mass think, produce them. Why like well, just a, get a cow and yeah. skin it and drop it into the, like that's, listen, that great white shark for that Mosasaurus is nothing. That is a you and I. Are, that's like me and you munching on like a couple crisps when we sit down at a table. That's not going to satiate our hunger. So they yeah, got to feed that thing at least forty-seven of those things a day. Are you giving it whales? Are you giving it cows? Like how are you feeding this megalodon or I'm sorry, uh, mosasaurus? It's unsustainable. I think. <laughs> and I, uh, listen. <laughs> like, it's still cool though, right? You get a shark, and and then the the, the Jay, the entire stadium sink into yes. the okay. I, I this looked is into this. <laughs> billions of dollars. So there's ten bays of people. Maybe I think I counted twelve rows per bay, and eighteen people per row. So that's two thousand one hundred and sixty people per show, all set on these. Quite sturdy looking seats and and like platforms. The amount of engineering required to sink that whole thing as far down as it goes, like the Mosasaur is huge. They sink it down. It's in a big tank. The lagoon's a big tank. And, they, and then when they sink it down, the like roofs cover them up because it all goes dark in there. This is monumental. Huge. And the emphasis on the mental. They had to ship everything to the island. And you know how much earth they had to move to the island? Like, that's like, it wasn't like, hey, you know, let's uh, let's build a Jurassic Park in London. Like, you know, oh, yeah, cool. Like, they had to go to an island yeah. way out there in uh, uh, Costa Rica. It's, so, you're going to go to Costa Rica. Rica. You know how much gear, like, you know how much steel and concrete you have to take? You know how thick that glass is, Jay? It, it must be, that, that feels like something we could work out, but that must be very thick. Because uh, to take that pressure, if that thing cracks <laughs> and audiences are in there, it's destruction on massive scale. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it's a TV screen. Maybe they worked out how dangerous it would be when you go down, and once you're down there, you're looking at a big TV screen, and behind that is three feet of concrete. Yeah. It's just solid, not transparent. It's all just fake. You, you have the would... shark tail dripping down, it's like sinking down. Most of gets it swims away. End of the show. You live life on the edge, Jay. That's the safer option. It is. It is. And you just have five or six different uh, animations done of, of this, of how it goes. But do you know who's in this crowd? 
Yeah, our boy Nick DeSemlin. Our uh, boy Nick DeSemlin, friend of the show. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> our boy. <laughs> like we call him up. Yeah. yeah the, the editor of Empire Magazine. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, the, you know how much glass? The, they, they couldn't do that on the island. They would have to do special tankers that bring that gas there. I'm just imagining uh, a cruise ship-sized concrete mixer. It's just been spinning the wet <laughs> concrete from wherever the nearest place you can get concrete from. You, and then you, just pull up in the lagoon and just tip it and then head back for the next load. The, you know how long it would take just to get the concrete mixers there? Right. <laughs> They're not quick. No. We're talking industrial. Yeah. This is – are we even – we're not in the trillions yet. This is billions. Um, yeah. It's – yeah, the, the 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 cloning of the dinosaurs feels like the easy part at this point. <laughs> it's making the part. It's, it's, oh yeah, you need another, another species. Fine, you're gonna create a species. Okay, but we we have we've run out of space. We need to get more concrete mixes there. That's a problem that I have with with these three films. Is dinosaurs are already very very cool. You could say they're the coolest. I don't know. Jurassic World events a new one. We don't need a new one. They're already cool. And then Fallen Kingdom invents another new one that's even stupider. Which will, like... Oh, oh it requires... You, you fire a laser gun at somebody, then the, the, the Indoraptor will kill them. What about just shoot them with the gun you had to shoot them with? Yeah. Anyway, that's... that's I hate... Or the, the rocket launcher that so you blew up one of the raptors with, Jay. Let's yeah. weaponize ra- raptors. And then they just blow up one of them with a rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah, I'll be ranting about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom very soon on the show. <laughs> Let's... Uh, it's a frustrating film. No, uh, with with a great aquatic scene, which we'll get to. The opening scene of that is one that we love. I um, do, I do love its dedication though, because we know a mosasaurus is in there. We know it jumps out of the water. So when it gets Zara, it's pretty nasty, right? It's probably the scene with the most personality in this movie. Yeah. It really is because it's kind of mean, it's kind of dirty, and and so are some of the scenes in Jurassic Park. So are some of the Absolutely. scenes in in the Lost World, and and so you have that, and then at the end. When Blue and the T-Rex are backing up the Indominus, you're going, oh, snap. You create this sort of fun tension already. And so I do think they're handled well. And I do think it's smart that they drop Zara in there because you're going, oh. <laughs> and then the birds get her. And you're like, what? That's a Rennie Harlan death. You you do need named characters to die in these films. It's my biggest problem with Dominion. Not enough <laughs> yeah. people get eaten by dinosaurs. <laughs> I come here to watch people get eaten by dinosaurs. And it doesn't happen as much as they should in that film with loads of named characters in it. Thousands of them. Mm-hmm. And it's like three get eaten. Anyway. And so they introduce do... new ones. And they survive. Like, what up? Uh, but, so you need to have named characters die. The named characters that die in this film are Zara, Simon Maserani, Duff and Khan, and then, uh, Lipson Sophia, Dick Hoskins. That's not enough. I need, I need more than that. Yeah, there's no like Zara is the standout death. They're like my God, think like you need to have that moment like that. Oh, the one that people are talking about is just people talk about it in a, in a way of that doesn't seem fair. Like if you think about the characters that die in Jurassic Park, you yeah. have no, uh, you have Gennaro, not, uh, yeah, Gennaro on the toilet, which he's the blood sucking lawyer. He doesn't really do anything bad. He's just kind of irritating a little bit. He's just uh, he's a suit. He's a, a, a money man. He's up. He's like, I'll have a coupon day. Yeah, you know, he's not a nice guy. And he gets a, a wonderful death. And then you have Nedry, the villain of the film, gets a horrific death. More horrific in the book. Have you read the book? Mm-mm. His, his de- it's the same. De- it's still the Dinosaurus death. Uh, but when he gets blinded, the, the, the acid goes in his, in his eyes and blinds him. He then describes being eaten alive. Yes. He can't see it. <laughs> he's like, it's like, uh, eating away at his skin, the, the acid, and then the dinosaur comes up and starts eating his intestines, and he can feel it, and it's it's genuinely horrific to read. <laughs> it's 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 so uh, visceral. Yeah, uh, so that's great death. And then you have Bob Peck. Love Bob Peck. Uh, Muldoon. He's a heroic character, a bit snarky, a bit bitter, but he's never going to make it out of the film. Mm-mm. And then, and of course, Sam, Sam Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, off-screen. Well, we assume it's Sam Jackson. We never, we, no, it's no, it's, we assume it's Mr. Arnold. <laughs> that arm was the right color. 
Uh, but other than that, this, like, he's just never seen again, so we have to assume. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, wonderful deaths, memorable deaths, fantastic deaths. Here, the only one that's memorable is Zara. Like, and it's just a shame that she's been a relatively positive character. But she's not. She was always going to die. I feel like she's named, but not important or big enough to make it out of the film. It's just a gruesome. Like you, you get a close up of her dangling from the the legs when she gets dropped in the water. It's you're really there with her. It's, I was thinking about uh, her just attached to a gimbal, shaking in a green in a blue screen, green screen room, just screaming. And they let her have it. I mean, it's quite devious too, Jay, because when the pterosaur lets go of her, you're going, "Oh man, it's going to be a smack." And then she lands perfectly in the water, and you're yeah. going, "Oh my gosh, it's 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 like a saw death. It's like a Final Destination death." Because <laughs> yeah, and I know I brushed through the odds really quickly, but I just love that she got picked up, dropped, grabbed, dropped, picked up, eaten. Like it's, and then she's playing cards in the belly of the Mosasaurus. But it's it's a good shot though, man. Like it's it's fun and it's mean and there's personality to it it's like the one bit that i i kind of love the most of it and you know i think she probably had at least a one in 24 million chance of that happening to her at least she's very unlucky then the the third time we see the mosasaur is as you've mentioned at the end when the indominus rex is is facing up against the t-rex and the, the velociraptors with blue being the main surviving one and you know they they They've rallied back, they're fighting it, they got it against the water. And just as as the Indominus Rex is doing its big thematic roar, which you know the T-Rex has done in every film so far, it gets taken out by the Mosasaur. And I love that it, that it gets undercut. It has this real Sam Jackson style death where it's monologuing at the water's edge and then the Mosasaur comes up and takes it down halfway through. Oh, First yeah. we're going to seal off this lagoon. It comes up bigger <laughs> First, I'm going to eat blue, and then I'm going to attack you, and then I'm going to go eat those humans. And then, But I feel bad for the Indominus, though, because it was raised in captivity. It escapes. It's immediately hunted for its entire life, and then it's eaten, and everyone cheers. <laughs> it didn't want to be like this. They made it. It's like, I mean, <laughs> you, you. I feel bad. Like, And you know what's nuts, it's not, too? <laughs> it's not bad. It was just engineered that way. They're like, listen, it's classified. But if you're a dinosaur, if you work in that paddock, you should know. Like, listen, here's an NDA. Do not tell anybody. If you guys work this paddock, this thing can blend. Why would you create a creature in a theme park that can blend in with the surroundings? My they wouldn't see it. They they My guess is they didn't mean to. Oh. I, that's Because I, it's it's a cocktail of different creatures' DNA. And like, why did you put chameleon in there? Don't do that. <laughs> But maybe they needed that for some other reason, like the 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 toad and the raptor wouldn't bond together, so they had to stick something like some science nonsense. They should have yada yada that, right? And it just oh, some a, a vital comedian fell in there, and what are we? <laughs> whoops! Have you seen Pascal? Oh, well. Have you seen Pascal? <laughs> it turns out the the raptor used it eating a comedian earlier that day. <laughs> just, they just got mixed up in the blender. They put the run. And, like, listen, it's uh, scope it out and then just be like, listen, guys, you if the if the thing disappears, if it thermoregulates, just throw some rocks in there or something. I don't know. Like, Chuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just do something like it's yeah. not out. It is not out of the cage. Keep it. Like, don't worry. Like, does that like, just check? Yeah. Just don't go inside. All right. Here. Here are some. Here's a bunch of I don't know steaks. Just chuck them in there and see if you whap something with it, and then you know that the Indominus is in there. Uh, Eric Edelstein, uh, he's the security guy or the paddock supervisor who died. Like I do like his death, where he's just kind of standing there and accepts his fate and gets taken out. It's... And you get the one extra who gets wiped out as well, because oh. he just can't run yeah. as fast as Owen. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the, the without a paddle thing. I don't try to run the Indominus Rex, I just outrun you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I, I do feel, but I, I, I just love the comical amount of things that led to poor Zara getting eaten. Just all the bad decisions that led yeah. to this. And there's nothing she could have done to avoid it, because like, if, if she didn't get taken, one of the kids probably would have done. Because mm-hmm. they're just 
stood still as well. They, they, they kind of rush out into the crowd and they're like, like what the only thing that's happening? They kind of stuck. Oh, those kids. Yeah. I just would have ducked out. I would have been like, listen, your kids ran away from me. I'm your assistant. Your name's Gray. Who knows going to miss you? Your name's Gray. <laughs> name? <laughs> <laughs> but just, that's the best moment of this movie, Jay. And I loved coming up with the odds. Levin Good and I sat there writing it down. And it, it's, and actually, Zadandi read this when she was with Cracked. And then she posted one of my articles for Cracked, and I started writing for Cracked. So this is one of the main reasons why I started actually writing for Cracked there for a little while. Because I came up with weird data and the odds of how Zara died. But it makes me very happy. Yeah, so. Man, poor Zara. Poor Zara, yeah. It's, she she was going to die, but it, it didn't need to be this horrific. But then, would you talk about it if it wasn't? It needed uh, to be horrific. Horrific. I'm fine yeah. with it. I'm absolutely fine with it. But it's just she just weird. needs to be a she needs to be a meaner character beforehand. I guess she needs to like she needs to. The kids are out there on their own because she wandered off rather than she they they escaped. Uh, like she She's with Jimmy Buffett drinking life. margaritas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then he runs that's, away and grabs both of them. That's how we say it. We make her more villainous, and then she deserves her fate. I guess. <sighs> <laughs> in air quotes deserves yes. as much as anyone deserves to get picked up by two pterodons and then dropped into a moment or so oh and uh, the, the, the other flying there's, there's two flying creatures there's the uh, uh, the dimorphodon is the other one which has like a t-rex kind of head oh. I, I really like those guys they, they've not been in the films before they, I, 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 I love dinosaurs but I wasn't aware of them before this film and I just I kind of love them the, 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 the dimorphodon they have two different species kinds of teeth. They have like mammal teeth and reptile teeth. Whoa. They're, they're the only animal that has that. They're super weird. Um, is, is that the one that dropped on Chris Pratt's back? Yeah, it's got like a raptor head on a pterodactyl body. It's it's weird. You look at it and think, that's just wrong. But no, they existed. That's what they look like. <laughs> just, and then you had the big different. pterodactyl hang glider scene that almost flew into the kids. Well, and it, it, sto- it stops just before it, yeah. <sighs> Did they kill? Were they killing those, or were they tasing those? I think they would be killing them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, once they should. start murdering guests. Yeah. Well, also their boss is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one's there to tell them not to do it anymore. And also, the pterosaurs were just chilling in their cage, like, "Hey, living life," and then boom, a helicopter blows it up, and then yeah, they're if, like, "Yeah." If, if someone knocks on my front door, my dogs go nuts. So if someone were to, like, crash a helicopter into my house, they'd go nuts. They'd try and escape. It, it stands to reason. Yeah. They've I been love riled up. We did it, yeah. Jay. Deep blue scene. Deep blue scene. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, if you're expecting an episode on Poseidon today, we're going to do an episode on Poseidon sometime. Not yet. Schedules are a bit up in the air. But we will do that eventually. But for now, we're looking at some deep blue, some, some Jurassic deep blue scenes. So there'll be a, a Fallen Kingdom one soon and a Dominion one soon after that, I would imagine. That'll be the next one, might be the one after that. I don't know, we'll see how it plans out. It's coming up soon. Uh, but for now, Mark, what do you got to plug? Mm, this is Movie Sons of Flicks, Movie Sons on FLX, the podcast. Go check it out. And you can listen to Con Air, the podcast. Check, listen to that. You absolutely should. And you can find me over on the Lambcast once a month hosting Lampity, Movie Trivia, based on Jeopardy. And my personal site is lifeversusfilm.com. So, for Jurassic World, for the Mosasaur and Zara and the T Rex and everything else, I have been Jay Clark. And I'm Mark Hoffmeyer. Deep Blue, see you again soon.